In this episode of my series on trotting, I want to take another look at floats. I briefly mentioned floats in, uh, I think it was the second episode of this series. And before I do some more fishing on the Avon, just want to have another more detailed look. I've done a bit of research. I've dug around on the internet, looked in one or two tackle shops, and the selections of floats that we had in the past are, are very different. I grew up using certain types of floats and, and some of those types have disappeared pretty much. Floats like the, the standard balsa float. I don't know if this will focus. Floats like the standard balsa float practically don't exist anymore. Drennan don't do, do them anymore. Dave Harrell doesn't do them. Premier, Premier floats do do one. They call it a pacemaker. It's nothing like a real pacemaker, which is a, a quite a specialized float. The original ones were almost a foot long, a huge great floats with a long um, swan neck on them and a, a piece of quite thick cane at the base. And the ones they've got have got quite short, thick tips and a piece of alloy at the at the bottom and, and they're nothing to do with the floats that Ivan Marks designed for Howard Humphrey 50 years ago believe it or not. So if you want a straight balsa float you're going to be pretty uh, limited in scope unless you go to sort of eBay and car boot sales. They're still a useful float that they've got very little weight to them so when you cast them they'll follow the bulk you, you tend to fish these with a bulk but worth looking out for, very easy to make. You just get some uh, quarter inch balsa dowel, stick it in an electric drill, a bit of uh, medium sandpaper, finish off with fine. Just put a bit of a tape on the tip. Probably want a piece of cane in the base and uh, three coats of varnish, maybe a coat of paint. You need to paint the tip and uh, there you go. I mentioned before that Drennan do these wire stem avens and they're, they're definitely a useful float. I don't think they're that suited to really deep water. They do go up to about 7 BB. They probably don't take quite enough weight. Drennan does a, a crystal, even a plastic one, which I'm sure work. They're probably not my first choice for a, an Avon float, mainly because I can make floats so easily. But uh, certainly the wire stem one, very useful on fast, shallow rivers. Uh, you can fish them in sort of two foot of water, very sort of float I often use for grayling fishing when I get a chance. It's got quite a buoyant tip, not terribly sensitive, but enough to hold up in, in rough water. So look out for those. These have got, a, a, I think it's a stainless steel uh, stem. Some, there are floats with uh, alloy stems using the sort of uh, welding rod and, and Dave Harrell is expanded his range of that type of float with thicker ones instead of 1.6 mil two millimeter alloy stems giving them more stability certainly well worth a good look at dave harrell's range he's doing quite a lot a lot of bolognese floats in a good half a dozen patterns anything from uh, ones with quite thick tips to ones with much more finesse and going up to carrying a good weight so six or seven grams eight grams and uh, definitely worth another look. This series isn't really about stick floats. I've done a series on stick floats and I may yet go back to it. Drake floats do some nice sticks. These are alloy stems. Used to be able to get the uh, John Allerton ones. John Allerton still does uh, some new alloy stem floats that are not quite the same as the originals, but I'm sure they work extremely well. The originals are very sought after with the uh, very dark blue paint. Uh, Dick Clegg used to do some floats that were also alloy stems with plenty of those. And, and these Drake ones have got quite a shoulder on it. Fairly thick tip, but uh, a nice float. And this is a fairly big one, 1.2 gram, six number fours. But uh, another float quite useful for fishing. Fairly shallow, fast, boily water not a finesse stick. Of course, Drennan do lots of uh, stick floats. They do ones with plastic stems. 
I think Dave Harrell does one mainly with wire stems or alloy stems. When it comes to Avon floats, these are some Stan Bennett ones. We used to be able to get these in Bournemouth. They were made by a float maker up in Birmingham and uh, our tackle dealer, Ivor Britton, used to get great big uh, batches of these down and they always sold fairly quickly. And they were very nice floats, quite a fine crow quill on there, quite sensitive tip. It's only about two and a half millimeter tips on these. And uh, they went up to about 12 BB, all the way from sort of three or four BB, fairly small ones, lovely floats. And they've got quite a shoulder on them. The type of Avon float that's often mentioned is the Topper float, named after Topper Haskins, who was a, a Bristol angler who uh, did extremely well on, in the matches on the Bristol Avon right from the 1950s onwards. His floats are slightly different to the conventional Avon. The ones we've been talking about are these with a, a, a bit of a shoulder on them and that's the sort of float I use a lot, it's what I make. And that shoulder lets you hold back better. Topper wanted a different sort of float. He was fishing the Bristol Avon below Bath where the river is quite big, places like Newbridge, um, Saltford and, and down towards Canesham, the, the famous Fry's Water, Swinford, places like that. And he wanted to cast right across the Bristol Avon and the prevailing wind is a sound westerly on the Bristol Avon. He wanted a float that would pull against that top surface skim on the Bristol Avon. He didn't want a float held up. And by using a, a big bulk weight of anything from 10 to 14 BB set a couple of foot from the hook, that weight would pull the float through. And that's what the topper was all about. And he didn't hold it back. The line would be on the surface. He's, he's casting underhand right across the river and he would he would mend the line and he would make sure it was sort of upstream and he could control how that line controlled the speed but he wasn't holding it back hard like you do when you're fishing much closer in the sort of fishing we do on the Hampshire Avon and the Dorset Stour. These are some topper floats that I made myself going back 30 years. These two dark blue ones are styrofoam and they're painted with acrylic paint. If you put a spirit-based paint, cellulose paint, stuff with white spirit or cellulose in it, the stuff melts. The other one is a, a balsa one, and uh, these vary from about 9 BB up to, four, the biggest one is 14 BB, and it's got a, a four and a half gram olivet on there, which is about right. And the difference with these, there's no shoulder at all. It's, it, it's just a nice slim taper there. And the tip needs to be one and a quarter inches long. I understand that Topper's nephew is making floats commercially and I think they're available in one or two tackle shops. But the floats I've seen seem to have too long a tip. And I, I spent uh, a lunchtime at one of the big angling shows many years ago, over 30 years ago. I think it was at Sandown Park talking to Topper about these floats and he described exactly what the dimensions should be and he was adamant one and a quarter inches for that tip, no more, no less. He needed to be able to see it at quite a good range. He was casting up to 25, 30 yards and then trotting anything up to 20 yards down. So you're talking about a float that you could see in reasonable light at maybe 40 yards or so away. And it, the, like I say, the float was just allowed to go through. When the fish stops, takes the bait and stops the float, these go, these just slide under. There's no, the bites are quite positive. And uh, that's what the top is all about. So understanding you can make these, they're not hard to make. You need some styrofoam, some crow quills, you do need to get the dimensions right and there's, like I say, there's no shoulder, just a, a gentle taper in each case and just over an inch of the crow quill showing. You don't want two inches showing, you don't want half an inch showing, you want plenty of tip there and they will work fine. It's not probably not the sort of float you want to use on the Hampshire Avon where you need a float 
with with more of a shoulder like this one and it, this has got more of a shoulder there this is not a particularly big float there's an olivet on here which is a four gram so it's probably about four and a half grams so not nothing like as big as about a 11 bb one other people i found that are making floats preston innovations they make stick floats including uh, alloy stems but a lot of their floats tend to be much towards commercial waters still waters wagglers for fishing for carp with pellets and, and stuff like that as well as standard wagglers which is again not what this series is about waggler fishing at all through this video i've put up pictures of different people's floats go online have a good search around see what floats you can find one of the few people making uh, croquil avens in any quantities of drake floats they do other patterns of floats as i say about uh, alloy stem stick floats and they make some uh, fairly standard croquil avens i don't think they're what i would call really special but they will certainly do the job and if you want that as a starting point before trying to make your own uh, one tip for making your own is i can never pass a, a crow's feather laying on the riverbank without picking it up i i saved the lot and over the course of a summer they molt around about july i'll pick up maybe six to a dozen every year some of them are no good they're split or broken i, I just throw them away again but uh, it's good fun making your own floats i've done a video about croquel avens it's not hard to make a balsa float and a pacemaker is not too difficult either as a final lesson it's long been said that 95 percent of floats are made to catch anglers when i've been looking through these different websites i've been sorely tempted to buy yet more floats i've got hundreds of floats i make hundreds of floats even this week i've made eight big avon floats that take i don't know how much they take anything up to about 10 or 11 grams i should think going from about four grams upwards uh, made with the um, slightly thicker hollow pole float tips are three and a half millimeter ones they're not finished yet they, they've had a couple of coats of varnish they need at least another coat and a little bit of uh, messing around with but it wouldn't take much more to get that they'll be usable by next week I don't quite know where all these floats go we've oh, collectively anglers must have bought tens if not hundreds of millions of floats and i'm sure most of them are in boxes in lofts or garages in drawers at home never used probably 80 percent of the ones we buy never see the light of day and there's a lovely little story from billy Makin who wrote uh, and published a book through amazon called golden memories about match fishing fairly uh, i think it came out this year and he talks about his canal braids that he made which were made from quite fragile balsa just a, a fairly slim float they took between two and four number four and he said because they was he said i could have made them out of a harder balsa but so many people broke them they had to buy more and <laughs> so they sold millions of them and uh, a good friend of mine one day we we didn't really have much use for them down in Wareham on the Froom and, and our still waters we needed bigger floats but we used to fish one winter league on the Kennet and Avon Canal every year at Pusey so our local tackle shop in Wareham uh, Guns and Sports used to uh, get in these Billy making floats just so that we could buy them to go fish the canal one of my mates bought half a dozen of these in the different sizes and he traveled up as a passenger in one of our cars to one of these winter leagues and he put them in the glove box for safekeeping instead of in something a steel box i think would have done the trick and he got out of the car clutching these floats a bit sort of like that with all the ends sticking out of these very delicate floats and as he got out of the car he forgot what he was doing and he brushed the top of those floats against the front door frame of the car so he was left holding 
six half floats. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye for now. Please subscribe. Uh, we'll soon be back on uh, a river session on the Avon, which I made just before the floods have come this week. And uh, when the floods go down, I'll get back on the river again, no doubt. See you again soon.